leaving Tyndrum. Tyndrum lies at the head of two major glens, with the iconic scenery of Glencoe just over the hills to the north. It's here that the main roads and railway lines to Oban and Fort William part company. Hence Tyndrum's unusual claim to fame. It's the smallest place in the country to be served by two railway lines and two rail stations. Scotland's rugged mountains are spectacular to look at, but you might be surprised to discover the value of the resources within them. Some areas, as around Tyndrum, are rich in minerals like lead and zinc, and even gold. In fact, there's now a gold mine near here at Conanish. It was constructed in the 1980s, when geologists decided there could be enough in the hills to make it worthwhile. But the price of gold then plummeted, and the mine was never used. Recently, as prices have risen again, miners have once more applied to extract gold from these rocks. As this is part of the National Park, great care will be taken to minimise any long-term impacts. When the Conanish mine finally opens for production, it will bring valuable jobs and income to the local economy. Mining is not new in this area. People have extracted lead and copper from the rocks around Tyndrum in past centuries, and recently platinum has been discovered in the drilling samples. Perhaps the mine at Conanish will produce a range of metals, but it's the quest for gold that's driving the project. This will be the first time that gold has been mined from under the ground in Scotland, rather than being panned from flowing water. Golden rocks and golden words. As you travel through this area, you're surrounded by the landscapes which inspired one of the most famous 18th century Gaelic poets, Donachuch Ban Machcantair, or Duncan Ban Macintyre. He was a prize-winning poet, yet couldn't read or write. At that time, most people didn't go to school, but there was a strong oral tradition of passing on stories, poems and legends. Duncan Ban McIntyre could recall all his own words from memory. When he moved to work in Edinburgh, other people wrote them down and they published his first collection in 1768. He died over 40 years later in his 80s, having created numerous poems and songs. Some of his works celebrate these very hills and glens where he lived and worked as a forester and gamekeeper. These are considered among the finest examples of Gaelic nature poetry. Corrie I think, is for many people, myself included, Don Ban's finest uh, p- poem. It's about uh, a Corrie that uh, you can still see today and walk into. It's still quite a wild place. And uh, he described it because he worked there uh, as a keeper and working with the deer. And he was a great observer of nature and loved nature. And he's writing in a very romantic way perhaps at a time when you wouldn't expect that to be happening in uh, European poetry, very early on, uh, 18th century poetry. And uh, here's just one verse from it, it gives you a, a flavour. Dolechgen coinol gudjerkach brulachach brechle fyrechen as crynjera cion and cref na charicha van bachnan steidichen stachgen frunasach nach bugaun. An bjarnan brige se feen rigel sen kanach min yal se mishle naun se hule mirje an bunas ishle go hinet kier an krichesard. And he's describing the blaeberries and cowberries, cloudberries of the roundest reddest head, the mountain gentian, um, the dandelion, penny royal, bog cotton, sweet vernal grass. He's talking about the different plants growing in the mountains and how beautiful they are and how they're very much part of the environment that he loves so much. <laughs> 